So I want to talk about uh, some basic stuff in OpenNMS polling of services. And as you may know, <coughs> for each situation you have to, or you would like to monitor, you have to create an own polar definition, which is extremely, yeah, can they, you can get a lot of polar definitions if you start to uh, look into things like website monitoring, where you get an, um, a whole bunch of URLs, and for each URL you need an own monitor. So my idea was to implement some kind of patterns, which allows you to specify or have one monitor definition which spans a whole range of monitors you can define or a whole range of services which you can define for an interface in a node which will basically all use the same polar definition um, but then use some placeholders in the polar definition to derive different behavior on each instance of that stuff. So what I would like to show is, let me get it over here. Um, Good. So what I want to do is open my polar definition. Let's see. Polar configuration XML. And then I want to add in a new I want to like to add in a new monitor definition, um, which is basically the usual stuff you usually do which is uh, virtual hosts HTTP monitor. And this monitor will get some um, definition up here, which is somewhere HTTP. Here we go. And we will add a definition for that. Wait a second. Let me just copy over because it's a lot of stuff to type. So this is the definition I would like to use. And the new thing is that it got a new field, which is called pattern, which basically contains a regular expression. And what I've defined in the regular expression is that there should be um, a named capture group, which can be everything, followed by a column, followed by another capture group, which is called path. And the second capture group with the second column is optional. Um, and the cool thing about that, I can access these capture groups down here. So whatever is between the first and the second column in my service name um, will be used as the host name inside the polar. The same is for the pass, and I can define default um, down here. <laughs> so with that, what I can do now, if I do the daemon reload polar, um, I can go back to the web UI. Let me get that out of the way. So I can go back to the web UI, then configure my OpenNMS, add some services. Uh, now I can add services which are called something like this. Yeah, no, I don't want to do it. Uh, HTTP colon sample.com. And I can add another one which is HTTP colon proof.example.example.com. And because of that capture group, I can also add HTTP example.com slash test. I have to add a colon there. Like this. You need the oh, dark you um, Yeah, I do. It shouldn't really matter. It's all going to... It still goes to the um, IP address defined on the service. So whatever I query, it should be on the local system. And if I go save and return and synchronize, And then go to the notes and wait a couple of seconds. Yes. I just you know when the reload daemon config works for uh, already. <laughs> when did that define 
Um, yeah, there was another fix in there, uh, which is also part of that, or which happened by accident, mm -hmm. that you can now add new polar definitions to the polar config and the reloading works, which hasn't had before. <laughs> Um, it's in the branch. I think. No, it's in, in the branch. <laughs> so as you can see, these all all, all these polars um, are not not monitored, so they're working. And if we go back to that window, we can tail the access log, and you get to see that there will query for ulf example com, vv example com, and the one with this left test as a result, or from that one single polar definition. That is a real. I have been struggling for 15 years on the best way to do this, and I was thinking that you just have a text file somewhere. Yeah. But I like your solution a lot better. If, if you can, it's 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 intuitive because you're doing it the provisioning repetition. Yeah. So if if you don't like, there are some use cases where you may not like to encode all that information inside of the name of the service, um, but therefore you can use the um, metadata information we've brought into 24. I think, um, which allows you to attach metadata to each of these services, and you can just use them in the polar definition, and then you don't have to encode it in the name of the service. Is there any way to make that connect to a local server rather than local host in the box that you use? Um, that depends on the polar. As far as I know, you can at least have the HTTP monitor uh, query an arbitrary IP address for that domain name. Or the other way around. Um, as long as the polar supports that, you can do it. Yeah, and I think you can do it with the HTTP monitor and the page sequence monitor. Yeah, almost every one of our web servers hosts probably five to twenty subdomains, and unless you go and create, you know, a different polar for every single um, domain you're looking at, you don't know. Because it'll, it'll go to you know, 10.1.1.1 .1 .1 and return all that for whatever the base uh, one is working. And I just did a whole thing for General Electric that this would have been awesome for. So, if you want to, do, what, what you're asking for is maybe something oh, so like. A specific example might be you have a you know, high availability public facing web server that has a URL that's your own that you want to monitor. So, you don't want to have, you, know, you don't want to point it to the specific IP address because it might. Change. Yep. So you just want to do that the okay. Yeah, I think you can do that. That's cool to manage it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, my, my use case for that is to uh got a couple of backend servers with a load balancer in front, and you want to test all that backend servers and the load balancer with the same URL set and can you um put some metadata into this use? Like say for example you want to change the timeout in querying um, com slash test to be something different. Yeah, I can do. So what, what you have to do for that is you can go back to configure, um, manage provisioning requisition, go back to the nodes. That lag is kind of strange in that how to navigate. Uh, and here you get a metadata. Um, and you can add arbitrary key value stuff for <coughs> nodes, services, and inter or nodes, interfaces, and services, the most specific kind of world specific one will win if you have the same value defined for the node and for example services. Um, so let's say we want to have a key which is just called timeout and it's, I don't know, 30 seconds. And I want to do the same thing for a special service. Um, let's say Ulf is a slow guy and we want to have that. Time out on that and increase it to, I don't know, 20 Wolf seconds. Both was fast, so we yeah. just give him 20 seconds, mm -hmm. not 30. Okay. Um, and after I've done that and just hit the synchronize button again. Um, all that stuff should show up in the metadata field inside of the node. Here we get the timeout. And <laughs> yeah, T typical it's German a name. A horse is a typical German name. And so now you get the timeout, a special timeout for Ulf. Oh, and by, by the way, you can see all that pattern stuff in here, um, and also the available patterns in the service in detail page. 
Um, and with that, you can now go in here and have something like the, where's the timeout? Yeah, the timeout. Um, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we can put the series after. And with that, we can do um, requisition, requisition, colon, timeout, and that will. Yeah, we have to default it to the six years and something like that. And that will change the timeout depending on the metadata setting for each of the polars. Um, so the idea of the metadata is that you have not only context uh, key and value, but you get context key value. Right. And the idea is for that to have different providers of these contexts uh -huh. um, or having a separate namespace for each provider. Let's say we get an asset information in there somewhere. Uh, we get that polar patterns in there, which has a special um, context. And there's just one context which is called requisition because it's available via requisition and you can just add it as, as user provided values. So that got, this context got put in there without knowing about it. Anything you edit via that, that UI gets thrown into the requisition yeah. context. That's all you can control via that UI. Right. Um, no, you have to specify, but you can do fallbacks. So if you know there is another context providing oh, that, okay. um, you can, uh, there we go, do something like pattern calling timeout. And if you want to add that to that pattern somewhere in here, um, it will be, will be available in that way. So time on this time on first and that one and then the default at the end. Um, another context available is the service context, which is used down here, um, which just reflects the real service name as seen in the UI, not the pattern. Because if we have multiple of the HTTP we host pattern, uh, the RD base, na base names are conflicting. And now we get the full service name back into there. And the services is both and the context. Um, no, service is the context. There is no scope and so scope and context is the same thing. Okay. Um, this is called scope in the requisition. No, in, in, the, in the requisition, the scope is if it's dependent on a service, an interface, or a node, right. um, which basically means the, the level on which the data is defined. Um, and the more specific scope wins over the not that most specific one. Because there's a scope within the context. Yeah. For the requisition data, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's a specific feature of the requisition context. Yeah, it's yeah. a specific feature of the requisition context, right. Um, there are other special contexts, um, which are also called node and interface, which provides all the node and interface data. So I can use something like, I don't know where to put it right now. Um, instead of the port, I can do, it's a stupid example, but just to demonstrate. I can do something like interface colon address, <laughs> which will give me the, the, the address of the interface that service is bound to and stuff like that. Um, but that's all fleshed out in the docker, which contexts and which services are available. So yeah, with that, we can have special timeouts for different sources and other fancy stuff. Some more questions? When are you going to put the pull request? <laughs> uh, the pull request is already there. It has been there before Def Jam. Because <laughs> 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 um, so I started to work on that on the last meeting in January. It wasn't finished and I've used Def Jam basically to, to finish all that stuff up. So Doku is there, the pull request is fleshed out, the unit tests are green. Nice. And yeah. Stay tuned for Horizon 25. Uh, should be then there, yeah. Very cool. That's it. Yeah. Thank you for the